This is your wake up call. Welcome to Breakfast Club, the show you love to hate. From the East to the West Coast, DJ Envy, Angela Yee, Charlemagne the God. The realest show on the planet. This is why I respect this show because this is a voice to society. Changing the game. You guys are the, the coveted morning show, but y'all earn that. Impact in the culture. They wake up in the morning and they, they want to hear that Breakfast Club. The world's most dangerous morning show. Be in the mother, be in the. Good morning, Angela Yee. Good morning, TJ Envy. Charlamagne the God. Peace to the planet. It is Thursday. Yes, it's Thursday. Yes, and the NBA draft is tonight in New York City. If you are over 6'6, you can absolutely positively bag any woman you want if you don't mind lying to her. Right, okay. That's right. Because there are a lot of a lot of people. I'm not just gonna say women. Women and men. I'm sure gonna be looking for uh, some NBA ballers. Do you mean got, women and men? Yeah, that was. There's gonna be some dudes. <laughs> gonna be looking for other dudes. You never know. You can't just cut dudes out. I mean, now. times have changed, exactly. but I, I don't think that's happening tonight. Okay, all right. Hey, you never. <laughs> as far know. as I know, there's no openly gay uh, NBA draft prospects tonight. Well, we, we don't know. So the city's <laughs> gonna be filled with people looking for that NBA baller. <laughs> Listen, man, it's a lot of new millionaires tonight. Is the first round, like. I tell women all the time, like, you have to be a better scout than some of these NBA teams, okay? You need to know who's going where, who is who, because they're not famous yet unless nope. you, like, follow college basketball. Well, they probably know the top three. You it, may know Lonzo Ball because of his daddy. Maybe Fox. You don't think Fox? I don't even know what he looked like. Oh. <laughs> we know because we were just at an event with yeah, him. Yeah, I guess so. Exactly. You don't even know his first name. You just like Fox because you remember the animal. De'Aaron Fox. It's De'Aaron Fox. What? what? Excuse me, what? De'Aaron what? Fox. Oh, okay. You heard Angela Yee say. Not De'Aaron right. say. I thought she okay. said DeAndre, but it's De'Aaron Fox. <laughs> <laughs> or D-Fox. D-Fox. All I'm saying is if you're over 6'6", six, six, you should have no problem getting a woman tonight. Okay. There you go. And women, don't be so thirsty. Y'all, I tell y'all all the time, y'all should have been plotting this out three, four months ago. Y'all should have been hitting them up on Instagram. Yep. Been hitting them up on Twitter, just in case. You know what's terrible? If you're what? a woman and you're a fan of basketball, people automatically will assume that you're there trying to find a baller. No. You could just be a fan. You can, you can tell the difference. Easily. It's a difference. Hmm. Well, it's, it's a look. Jalen Rose will be here this morning, yes. and he'll be breaking down the draft. With a, we'll kick it with him a little bit later. Drop on the clues bombs for Jalen Rose. That's Jaylen my guy. Jalen everybody. And also, Ice Cube will be joining us this morning. Drop on the clues bombs for the OG Ice Cube. You know, he has that big three tournament that's kicking off at the Barclays this Sunday. Angelie and I are hosting, so we'll talk to him about that and everything else. So very basketball-heavy show. Very basketball-heavy. Um, well, What's Ice Cube ain't basketball. He got, it's we got a big lot three other league. stuff to talk about, though. I mean, so he, he, he loves the Lakers, so it's a big night for mm-hmm. him. Lakers got the number two pick. Lakers are looking to make a lot of big moves as far as uh, trades are concerned. And he got his big three launching. Mm-hmm. I can't believe we didn't have no young young thoughts on here to properly describe how to NBA draft etiquette for the night. So That's we, what we should have We could talk to some young thoughts. I know That's they out problem. there. Y'all out there. Y'all listening. Y'all getting your eyelashes done. You got your edges laid correctly. You got your little outfit for the night. Maybe even two. I know y'all out there listening. Well, they can call us up during, I, I guess, is that blessed? That's not mad. I mean, it, they're, I don't know. Yeah, it, it could be, right now, you want to hope for the best if you're a young thought, right? right? So you're hoping for a blessing today. Yes. But tomorrow, you'll probably be calling up for telling why you're <laughs> mad. Right. Because you didn't get no action. Right, right, yes. right. So we'd love to hear from you if you're going out to the NBA draft or you're looking for a baller. You can call us up during our Tell Them Why You're Mad, Tell Them Why You're Blessed segment. Mm-hmm. 800-585-1051. And, and oh, shout out to everybody who came out to my book club yesterday. We had a great book club meeting mm-hmm. yesterday at Woodstack Ivy in Brooklyn. And we do, we're doing Kevin Hart's book. You can't make this up. It was a great turnout. Shout out to Kettle One. They actually provided a little drinks Drinky for the drinks. situation. Okay. And a DJ Jazzy T. But it was great. It was nice. We had some good conversations. It always ends up with people want to talk so much, I have to just cut it short and be mm. like, okay, it's over now. It's time to go home. Gotta go. All right. I did a commencement speech yesterday, man. In, I have one today. In, in Newark, New Jersey. It was, it was a surprise. Cory Booker introduced me. Was he there? No, he did it via video. And okay. Then, and then I came out and did a commencement speech for the 13th Community School, 13th Avenue Community School in Newark, New Jersey. And I see you gave all the kids books. Yo, listen, I come bearing gifts, baby. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They told me it was 87 graduates or word. That's nothing. 
87 kids. That's all right. It. Well, thank you. That's a good, great thing to do for yes, the kids. Yes, and I love there. when the teachers, well, first of all, I'm going to talk like me regardless. So I love when they let me come out and I was telling them about the importance of self educating and educating yourself. So I told them education is like masturbation, okay? Sometimes you got to do it yourself. That went over really well with the crowd. I'm sure it did. They, I'm sure they, the kids they, loved it. They, they, totally sure the loved it. they totally understood where I was coming from. Did you wear a suit? Of course not. All right. Front page news, what are we talking about, Yee? Uh, we are going to talk about a stabbing that happened at Flint Airport. Okay, we'll get into all that when we come back. Here's Gucci Mane, here's Drake, it's both. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning, let's go. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. That was Gucci Mane, Drake with both. Now, let's get in some front page news. Now, as Charlamagne mentioned earlier, the draft is tonight. The NBA draft is tonight, a.k.a. tonight, that if you're over 6'6", you should be able to get some action from a young lady if you're willing to lie about where, who you are and where you're going to be drafted. Now, who has the first pick tonight? Philadelphia 76ers. Second pick goes to? Los Angeles Lakers. Third pick? Celtics, I believe, right? Boston Celtics. I, I know the Knicks pick is number eight. So. Number eight. Mm -hmm. Yes. All Looking right. good for the Knicks? That's what you should do. That's what I'm saying. When you over six. Envy loves the Knicks. I don't know what's going on now. <laughs> Phil, Phil Jackson was like, you might want to trade Porzingis because they need a younger team, but he's only 21, so uh, I'm, I'm confused. Uh, Chris Tapps, Porzingis is going into his third year in the league, so I don't know what the hell. I think Phil Jackson suffers from CTE. Either that or know. Phil Jackson has been cloned. I, okay? I, like, I don't know what's going on. All right. Well, Neither does Phil Jackson. Clearly. I, I can tell. Now, let's talk about what happened in Flint, Michigan. Well, there was a stabbing at Bishop International Airport in Flint, Michigan, and a police officer was wounded yesterday. They're saying it is an act of terrorism, but uh, the FBI is saying that. Now, the suspect has been identified, Amor Fatoui. He's a 50-year-old from Quebec in Canada. He came to the country on June 16th and went to Michigan. That's where he attacked Jeff Neville of the Bishop International Airport Department of Public Safety. Now they're saying that he yelled out Allahu Akbar before he stabbed Neville. And then he said something like, you have killed people in Syria, Iraq, and Afghanistan, and we are all going to die. Fortunately, Neville is in stable condition after undergoing surgery. He was stabbed in the neck. And so now they are still uh, investigating. He has lived in Canada, the suspect for 10 years. And was with his wife and children. Jesus, mm -mm -mm. that's sad. What, what else? Who else do you want to go from? Well, here, we have you? a story in Baton Rouge now. You and Charlamagne, I told you guys the story, and you made up a whole entire scenario. But uh, Chauncey Wilkerson, 19 years old from Baton Rouge, is facing charges of illegal use of a weapon and aggravated assault with a firearm. That's because he shot at a man who catfished him on social media. Now, when Chauncey Wilkerson met the man, the man was posing as a woman on a dating app. And he told the cops that he asked the man several times, do not come to my house, because he found out it was really a man. And the guy still showed up, pulled into his driveway. So that's when Chauncey went and got his mom's gun and confronted him. And that's when they said the man drove at Chauncey and his mom and hit them with the car. So he fired four shots at the car, and the man fled from the scene. Oh, he should have been hit then. I mean, you come to my house, I tell you, don't come to my house. Right. And, and now you, now, you already catfished me. Now you're a criminal. Now you're a suspect. Now I think you're trying to rob me or kill me. And you're going to drive towards me? Yeah, you should have By the way, you're technically a criminal when you lied to me about your identity. Okay? It should be some type of charges that could be brought against people who do that. Did he All get right? hit? Did he get hit? Or no, just shot at? That's, no. actu that's actually Well, yeah, they hit, he hit them with, with the car. That's actually a form of entrapment, too. If you lie to me and tell me that you're somebody you're not, and you know, in order to have a meeting with me, and then I say, okay, yeah, and I show up, that's entrapment because I don't know. This could be a setup for all I know. Well, he found out and tell him, don't come, and he still came. Did he really come though? That's See, what we need to know. I know somebody who's like getting though. catfished. It sounded right like he now. came. It sounded you know like what? he came and then got upset you when he what? found out it's got to happen. All right, that's from Page News. You know what? <laughs> Thank you, Yee. That's what it sounds like to me. Goodness gracious. Okay. All right. Don't get mad after you get the fellatio. Get it off your you knew chest. What it was. Get it off your chest. No, we're not. You know what? Just, <laughs> you know, I just can't with you guys. You knew what it was, young man. 800 585 1051. Tell them why you're mad or tell them why you're blessed. 800 585 1051. We call it Get It Off Your Chest. Yes, and I need to hear from the young ladies who are out tonight in these New York streets looking for new money. NBA draft is tonight, and the Wolves is out with their high heels and little black dresses on. Okay? All Call right. me if you're plotting, damn it. I think we got a couple on the line. We'll talk to them when we come back. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Let's go. This is your time to get it off your chest. Whether you're man or black. Say it with your chest. We want to hear from you on The Breakfast Club. So if you got something on your mind, let it out. Jasmine, good morning. Good morning, you guys. You from L.A.? I'm from L.A. It's 3 a.m., but... You up early. 
come up early. I just left the Diddy party. I'm mad. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. Tell us how Diddy party was now. You ain't just going to leave it. It was lit. Who was there? Um, Prince Montana, Nelly, everybody. It and you, really going, you going home alone? You ain't getting no penis? No, I didn't get any penis. Damn, boo. What you went for? The you network? You B- BET Awards weekend? <laughs> It's BET Awards weekend on media correspondence, so I went to cover. I'm there you not, go. She's I'm working. Like that. That's Charlie good. Made. Okay. There you go. Now, why are you mad this Just because a woman be goes somewhere. Soon. Huh? Angela will be out here soon. Yeah, I'll be there tonight. Yay. Okay, I'm coming for the McDonald's event. Anyways, I'm mad because I, get, I went on a date with this crazy guy, and I didn't know he was crazy. And, and literally, like, he won't stop texting my phone, and I'm just, like, scared. <laughs> why won't he stop texting your phone, boo? Did y'all have sex? Hello? Uh, Tell the truth. Did y'all have sex? Okay, she oh, y'all had sex. Had sex. Well, uh, All right, the well, vagina's that's good. That's why you won't stop texting your phone. Crazy, <laughs> deranged. That's why you won't stop texting your phone, because your box is good, baby. He's crazy, though. He's, like, threatening me, yeah, and that's not I'm, cool. like, real life scared. Well, just stop, well, stop putting it on everybody so good, then. Every now and then, you got to get some subpar box, especially the first time. <laughs> Give some... Bo- I'm serious. Don't put you all into it the first time because you got to see if he's crazy or not. Don't just be putting it on people. Now, how long did you wait before you gave him the box? Was it the first date? We're not answering any of these questions. Oh, my goodness. And you gave it to him the first date. Yeah, he's a little crazy. You but, turn, you, but, you turn but, him but on. You don't victim him in here. What victim? Nobody, she's not a victim. She said that he's acting crazy and threatening well, her. she's not a victim? Jesus Christ, yeah. yeah she's <laughs> all these bug words. Victim blaming. Like, you're trying to blame actin her that he's acting crazy. Do you feel like a victim? Acting mad crazy. I try to be nice and not block him, and now he's, like, acting really crazy, so I have to block him tonight. Well, yeah, some, sometimes sometimes you got to do that, boy. If he gets dangerous, then you just call the police. That's all. <laughs> I'm serious. Don't call the breakfast club if he starts really getting dangerous. Even right? out of them gang members out there. What no, don't call them? no gang members. Call 911. Well, I can't wait to see you, Angela. I will see you when I get out there. I can't wait to. All right. Get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. If you're upset or you need to vent, you can call us or maybe you're blessed. Hit us up. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. This is your time to get it off your chest, whether you're mad or blessed. So you better have the same energy. We want to hear from you on The Breakfast Club. Angelique, good morning. Good morning, CJ. I'm B. How you doing? And Angelique and, and Charlemagne the God. I've been trying to contact you for the longest. What's for up, the mama? longest. Okay, I need you to, to put it out there. It's, it's on Google. The Schenectady Police Department murdered my husband on May 11th. I've been trying to email Charlemagne the God for he, they could give him the donkey of the day because they don't want to. Um, they haven't I um said the police who did it. They haven't. They're still working. They're, if you Google him, his name is Andrew, A-N-D-R-E-W, last name. They denied him medical treatment when he said that he couldn't breathe and he felt dizzy. The officers took it upon themselves to deny him this. They were his judge, his jury, and his executioner, and I do not have my husband no more. Please, wow, I need this is to- really sad. I'm looking it up right now. This is awful. Yes. Yes, it is. Oh, my God. Where are you from, baby? I'm from the Bronx. Um, No, I'm from the... No, I am from the Bronx. He is from the Bronx. He was visiting a friend, Mm -hmm. and they denied him medical treatment. Please, Charlemagne the God, I need you to give them donkey of the day. I need you to, to help me get justice for him. I need you to find the answers that I'm looking for because me and my children and everybody, we do not know what happened to him. It's been over a month. Mm-hmm. And we still, I still don't know the officers. They're still working. Well, this listen, is really baby, sad. They said he was yeah. yelling in pain. He let's, was. Let's get her yeah. information. We'll, we'll he get was having information. breathing we'll, problems. We'll do some homework and we'll look it up and, and, and make dizzy. sure we have all the right information and try and to do something for you, mama. And then he was unresponsive by the time <laughs> he arrived at the police department. Okay, and, mama. And, listen, and, and you and you right in the Bronx. You right in the Bronx. <laughs> you right in the Bronx, so we can have you come up to the show, baby. Yes, please. Oh my God, please. I mean, I've been, I've been emailing you. I've been going on my, on my Facebook, shouting you out on Twitter. Everything, yo. I've been, I've been so, I want you so much to, to okay. please well, Mama, put it out there. Hold on, hold on, relax. Hold on, we got we'll you, boo. We we'll got you. Please, we got you. You hold on, okay? <laughs> this, we we hold got on, you. Get her, up, right? get, her, get her information. 
Wow. This is right. what we use the platform for right here. We got Absolutely. this. We got her. We going we going we going we going to let her tell her story at the end of the day. All right. That's Ma what you that's what that's what we here for to be a voice for the voiceless. Absolutely. Let's 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 I'll end make with sure, some make positivity. Sure get her, make sure I'm going to get her I'm going to get her info. number. I'm going to get her number. Let's Don't put, let her hang up. All right. Get it off your chest. 800-585-105. Did y'all get the young lady info? We got her info, man. We are getting her info right now. Book that, book that book that book that interview. We don't, don't need to even talk about it. We're going to bring her up here and let her tell her story. Absolutely. Now we got rumors on the way, E. Yes, find out why people are mad at Stevie Wonder, of all people. Stevie Wonder? Yeah, people are a little upset about some things he said. Okay. Oh, I did. I did. You know what's so funny? The irony about that, I saw that. You saw and it? I, and I, I, I screenshotted that, and I sent it to the, my, my people in a group chat, and I was like, people are acting like they don't see this because it's Stevie Wonder. <laughs> He's stupid. <laughs> Wait till you hear the story. And don't forget, Ice Cube will be joining us next hour. So don't move. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Mask out. Yeah, salute to all the young ladies chasing a check tonight in New York City because the NBA draft is tonight. Mm -hmm. The Wolves got their high heels and little black dresses on. So what would you wear tonight if you was looking for a ball, Charlamagne? What would you wear? Uh, 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 actually, I would wear a pantsuit. I would wear a pantsuit, and I would approach these NBA ballers like I am a young lady who uh, has a new app. Mm -hmm. And I'm in the tech world, mm. and you know I'm, I'm trying to help you Ooh. invest your your newfound money. So you would shift it. You wouldn't they, wear your typical absolutely. high heels. There and you go. Wear. You got to approach it from a different angle. See, mm. you, I, smart I, I've been out of the PPM game for a while. You know what I'm saying? I used to have a PPM company, proper poom poom management. Okay. So I've been out the game for a while. You know what I'm saying? But mm -hmm. I could have I could have coached coached you young ladies months ago on how to handle the name. Okay. I'll let you Uncle Shaw. I still might give some tips away for free. Okay. Maybe. All right. All right. Well, let's get to the rumors. Let's talk what love and hip hop star pose nude. Listen up. It's just in. All the gossip. Gossip. The rumor report. Gossip. Gossip. With Angela. Angela Yee. It's the rumor report. The Breakfast Club. Well, rapper, producer, Milan Christopher from Love and Hip Hop Hollywood has posed nude in Paper Magazine, which is a very artistic. Who's now, that? He was up here before. Remember, he was uh -oh. he was gay, and he had the love interest on the show. And Remember, then, he was gay. What changed? I'm he still gay? When, or he no? when he came up here, he discussed it on The uh, Breakfast okay. Club. You still look gay to me. All right, now. Flaming, human torch. Now, he's in Paper Magazine, and he's celebrating LGBTQ pride. He said, I just feel like in our culture, it's so taboo for a guy to show their bodies, but it's okay for a woman to do it. I just kind of want to break that. I think I have a nice body. I think it's art. And I just think that it should be celebrated like they celebrate women's bodies. So, you know, I could be a guy and be gay and be black. What are they talking about? And be artistic about? in a nude fashion shoot in the same way that anybody else could. If how you have it, Revolt TV, you can see the pictures. How is it taboo for a man to show their body? These rappers have been walking around shirtless forever. What well, he's not just shirtless. There's a, you know. Don't you look? You can look. It's just covered up, but I'm saying. <laughs> He's full frontal nude. Like, Yo, you should have seen the way Charlamagne looked. He looked fast. Like, I didn't look this way. I didn't know it was you on the TV. You guys have to see. <laughs> I just thought she was talking about it. All of the pictures in the magazine. There's one where he's on the motorcycle and he has his penis laid across the seat. It's amazing. But it is a double standard, though. I mean, I don't even think, you know, people, women don't even like male strippers as much as they probably like to go look at female, female strippers. strippers. Yeah. Well, he said, as a male music artist or man in general, showing your male genitalia is so taboo in our culture. That's because but it's everybody. Okay for Amber Rose, Kim Kardashian, or Rihanna to do it as females. Because Amber Rose, Rihanna, and Kim Kardashian don't have to worry about hang time. I don't have no hang time. I would never let nobody see me coming fresh out the shower, okay? I'm a sure. Well, if you were packing a, like Milan Christopher, maybe you would. I'm a grower, not a shower. I'm sure he had a little fluff to it. You know what I'm saying? He probably put you a little, hating. You probably are love, hating. put a little penis pump on it. Why are you hating? Are no, because I'm gonna be honest, it wasn't erect. It was like hanging down. It was yeah, because he probably big. just finished masturbating or something, and he take take the picture this right guy now. Is hating? It was this more than one picture. Hating. Look and see if it was shiny. Why was you hating shiny? on that man? If penis, it was shiny, man. he just finished masturbating. <laughs> you a hater. All right. Stevie I hate on Wonder. everybody with hang time. I see. I don't have any. I'll be t steady tugging on mine, trying to get it to hang low. Okay. okay. Stevie Wonder was speaking on youth gun violence at the North Minneapolis Conference on Peace over the weekend, mm -hmm. and he said some things that people felt like uh, they had an issue with. All right. Here's what he said. It is in your hands to stop all the killing and all the shooting, wherever it might be. Because you cannot say Black Lives Matter and then kill yourselves. Because you know that we mattered long before it was said. But the way we show that we matter, the way that we show all the various people of color matter is by loving each other and doing something about it, not just talking about it. Now, just waiting to see the media and press come when there's a horrible thing. 
Well, it's two different issues. I it mean, is. One is black people killing black people. The other is the unjust killing of black people in the hands of the police. That's the reason Black Lives Matter was born. So Stevie is actually conflating the two issues. And by the way, you all are not going to slander the great Stevie Wonder and try to get him out the paint. Instead of slandering him, how about educate him and help Stevie Wonder to see the error in his ways? All right, comments. now, I think there's nothing wrong with saying that we <laughs> got to make sure jerk, we don't kill man. people that look like ourselves, right? right? That's fine, he but I, I wouldn't together. put it with, don't even know we I wouldn't like. put it with Black Lives Matter because that's a whole other issue and he a whole other together, reason yeah. for the movement. So that's what the real issue was. Well, you just got to educate Stevie, man. Help, help, help him to see what's really going on out with here that. in these streets. All right, George He's Clooney, by the way, have you guys ever had Casamigos tequila? Yes, I have. <laughs> well, he's selling it for $1 billion. I heard all about it. Drop one of Clues bombs for George Clooney. Wow. He's getting seven hundred million up front, guaranteed money, three hundred million over the next ten years. He's only had the company for four years, man. Uh, uh, uh. Right, it's him and two of his partners. Uh, uh, uh. I'm not even mad at him. I am not even mad at George wow. Clooney what an in the least bit. Okay. Now Diageo is actually the company that is purchasing uh purchasing Casamigos and they, no, they have, have a they billion. Have yes, they do. They have Diddy's tequila and Diddy's uh Ciroc, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, he said, we created Casamigos Tequila four years ago for us to drink personally, and selling it for $1 billion is something we never could have imagined. Wow. Yeek. All right, I'm Angela Yee, and that is your rumor report. All right, thank you, Miss Yee. Now, when we come back, Ice Cube will be joining us, so don't move. We'll kick it with Ice Cube. Good morning, everybody. It's DJ MV Angela Yee, Charlamagne the God. We are The Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building. The legendary Ice Cube. Yeah, yeah, what's happening with you? Hey, welcome back. We, we got to start celebrating our legends more in the game, man, because it seems like they just passing so much. It's just like, yo, why they here? Let's let's celebrate them. Crazy. Please celebrate me while I'm here. <laughs> Please, yeah, man. Give me some love. Congratulations for getting your star. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. you know, why that was love. so long overdue? Uh, I don't know, you know, because... I don't know. It do, it, it was kind of long overdue. I thought you had a story. Me already. too. I didn't <laughs> even think about it. Like, <laughs> the only one, the only one I spray painted when I was little, you know <laughs> what I mean? But for the most part, it, it was a cool day. Whenever you get it, you happy, you know what I'm saying? And what was cool is, like, the history of me was there. Mm -hmm. Like, the history of my whole career from Trey to, to uh, Sir Jinx to DJ Pooh. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it was just great to see just all the fam. Yo-Yo was there. It was just <laughs> dope. It's a weird space for you to Cube, because it's like... Do you celebrate Cube as one of the greatest MCs of all time or one of the greatest in Hollywood? Like, it seemed like you you in both worlds very well. Really, I want my MC props. You yeah, know what I'm saying? That's what I want. Okay, okay, I want okay, my okay, MC okay, props. Okay. <laughs> you know, that movie stuff, you know, whatever. But, you know, that's what really makes me, you know, feel good is that, you know, people respect, you know, the work I done put in. Yeah, you that, see the like, NWA movie, amazing film. Mm -hmm. And what did you think about the Pac movie? I haven't seen it you yet. You haven't seen it yet? Yeah, I haven't seen it yet. Mm -hmm. I want to see it. i just been so busy, you know, with this basketball league. Mm -hmm. It's been crazy. But, you know, I, I want to see it. You know, I'm very interested in, you know, learning more about Pac. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I knew what I knew as a friend, but you never know those, you know, things that that, sh that could be revealed in a movie. Right. Snoop worked on that, too. and um, Or actually, I guess he gave his story about why him and Pac had a, a falling out or a disagreement, which I didn't know about. Yeah, I yeah, I didn't, I didn't know that either. So mm -hmm. it's a trip because when I did the NWA movie, I learned a lot working on that movie because when I broke up with them, I didn't know what they were going through. I didn't right. know what was happening. Mm -hmm. So making the movie and interviewing Yella and Ren and going in depth, I was learning stuff. Like I was like, damn, this movie going to be good. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> <laughs> if I'm learning new stuff and I was part of it, you know, I'm pretty sure the audience is going to learn a whole new, you know, dynamic of the group. That movie was so good. It, it, that's like a, a hard act to follow. It set a, the bar really high. It set the bar, like, too high. It's like, wow. Any movie you see after, they'd be like, well, it, it got to get close to this NWA movie. Yeah, that's, my man told me about the Pac. He said, he said all I want to know is it on a scale from one from Notorious to Straight out of Compton, where does it land? <laughs> <laughs> that's what he said in the bar. Damn, that's Saturday. funny. <laughs> that's kind of funny. Um... I mean, it's hard to do, man. It's hard to get right. It's a thousand ways to get a biopic wrong, and it's only a couple of ways to get it right. So it's a hard, like, you know, you're really trying to get a hole in one or, you know, hit a home run off right. one pitch. You know, you're really just trying to, to you know, hit the bullseye, and it's not easy. And, it, you know, it, it took great minds for us to do it. You right. know, you got 
uh, I ain't going to put myself first, but you got, you know, <laughs> Gary Gray, right. Dr. Dre, you know, the great people at uh, at Universal, you know, all focused on making this movie great. So, And it's hard because there's so many stories you have to leave out. Even though you might feel like it's important, you're like, okay, but it's the movie is X amount of minutes. Yep. So we got to make sure we get in certain things. But I'm sure there were a lot of things that you felt like should have made it in, could have made yeah. it in, and ultimately didn't. I mean, you know, we felt like it could have been a mini series, you know, um, mm -hmm. but we wanted to go to the big screen with it. We felt the prestige of the big screen is is unmatched, and you do leave out a lot of stories because you you know you're trying to summarize stuff, you know, things that happen over the course of two or three months. You may only can show that in two or three scenes, so you have to summarize it and make sure that. Um, you're saying what you need to say, giving the audience enough information, but also true to what really happened. So it's not an easy thing to do. Mm -hmm. It could go bad. I mean, a lot of people still mad that we did the Straight Outta Compton movie. And, <laughs> Why? you know, because they, you know, either didn't like how they was depicted. Like a Jerry you know, Heller wish they, Yeah, right? wish they would have. You know, had a had a bigger role in making it. You know, it's, it's all kind of reasons why people don't want movies to be made. You can't please everybody, though. No, you so. can't. You said you showed Tupac how to keep it gangster. Oh yeah. What, what game did you give Pac? Well, you know, it's it's in a you know more in the form of you know showing him how to do them kind of records mm -hmm. uh, and, and opening up his creative mind to do those kind of records. You know, same with anybody who came after me. You know, it, it's not literal like you know I showed him this part and that part of the game but just overall just showing them that style and that flavor i think sparked and fueled their creativity you know even when it sh says you know i show biggie small yeah exactly mm -hmm. so you know i hope i showed a lot of mcs after me how to do and be themselves on the mic just like the ones before me show me. All right, we got more with Ice Cube when we come back. Of course, we're going to do an Ice Cube mini mix, so let me know your favorite Ice Cube joint. Also, we got to talk his new Big 3 basketball tournament. We'll do that when we come back. Keep it locked. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Angela Yee, Charlemagne the God. We are The Breakfast Club. Ice Cube is in the building. Now, the Big 3 tournament, why'd you create it? Why'd you start it? Just as a fan, man. You know, it's just... You know, seeing dudes retire that I know can still play basketball. You know, I seen Kobe score 60 points in his last game. Now, he probably can't play that NBA schedule no more. You know, them 82 games, back-to-backs, three right. games and four nights. But as far as just playing basketball, you know, once a week, half court, three on three, man, that's that's like them dudes is going to gonna, it's, it's gonna feel like the glory days, you know, when they get on the court. Now, I've seen a few scrimmages, and it's just an incredible, incredible, you know, thing to see is, you know, seven-footers playing three-on-three -three basketball. Right. It's just crazy. So, as a fan, I just felt like this is something I want to see. And, you know, I'm no different than any other basketball fan. So, I felt like it would be something that, that y'all would want to see. And, then, you know, the people that that's in the basketball that, that ends up getting a hangover when the finals is over because it's boring – and it's, you know, sport, <laughs> sports is whack in the summer pretty much. So I didn't want it to be like that no more. So here we are, the big and three. And a lot of kids that hear about these legendary ball players that they never had a chance to see play, and now they can see Allen Iverson play. Without a doubt. You know, it's a it's a dream come true for a lot of people. Um, and, you know, this is our first year, and hopefully we grow and attract people like, you know, KG and, mm -hmm. you know, uh, you know, Ray Ray Allen and you know uh, I mean you got Paul Iverson, Pierce which, and, which is a big one. Did anybody turn you down and say, "Well, I'm not ready yet"? Yeah, a few guys said, "You know, I'm gonna watch this year and y'all do y'all thing." You know, I, I'll try next year. How do they get paid? Well, they all get paid a, a, a you know base salary, uh, hundred G's base salary, and then they revenue share. You know, but if you win the championship, you get the most money. Gotcha. You come in eighth, you get the least money. So. It's a lot of incentives for guys to to go hard. And merchandising? We Merchandise, have. you know, it's going to be full. To me, it was a great omen for mm -hmm. the league to start off our first game right here in New York, mm -hmm. Mecca basketball. And doing it in Brooklyn, to me, you know, tends to lean towards the, the street nature of three-on-three -three basketball. Mm -hmm. And we right. just, 
You know, it's about to grow up. Three on three basketball is going to grow up on well, Sunday. Me and Envy will be there um, hosting on Sunday. That's yes. Right. So we're excited. With, thank you so much for having us in the building for that. Are you going to play in the games at all? Are you crazy? <laughs> <laughs> no. I mean, <laughs> this is not for celebrities. <laughs> this is not for weekend warriors. You know, right, this now is you for. You did mess around and this, get a triple double now. Yeah, but, that, <laughs> but that's, that's on a damn rap record. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but. This is straight for former NBA players. Right. You know, nobody else can play. You had to spend some time in the league. So everybody on the team played a little bit of NBA. So, like, yes. obviously, team, and there's, you know, a couple of players. So we'll know all those names. They yep. played before. They played before. You know, Steven Jackson's playing. He's supposed to be coming up here, too, to talk about it. Really? So what team looks the best so far out of all the teams? Oh, man, there's some strong teams I'm out there. I'm an Iverson fan. You know, I grew up yeah. in South Hampton, Virginia. Yeah. That's my guy. So that's, that's okay, So you're going for. for three's company. That's okay, right. that's fine. You know, I mean, Trilogy looks strong. Mm -hmm. I think uh, Three-Headed Monsters, they're a surprising team. Um, killer threes, mm -hmm. you know, look like a strong team. So it's going to be some battling out there, man. They're already trash talking. Mm -hmm. If you go to big3.com, you can see everything and, and get to know about the league. Mm -hmm. And we're excited, man. Now, now you a Laker fan. Do you want yeah. him to draft uh, uh, um, Lonzo Ball? Yeah, I do. Okay. I do. I think he'd be a great flavor for the Lakers. You know, we need we need a little spark. We need, we need somebody to shake up that Staples Center. And if it's Lonzo or LeVar, it don't matter. Somebody <laughs> needs to shake it up in there and make it happen. How do you do? You agree with LeVar's tactics? Yep, me too. I love it. You know, I just love to see a black man behind his son. Yes, publicly, absolutely, and boldly, and 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 and, and he has confidence in his son, and he's not, you know, uh, disappointed right. or anything. He's so I like that. You know, some of his tactics, you know, you can question, but. You can't question his motivation, his love. Uh, you know, I think once, you know, Lonzo is, is uh, drafted, that LeVar will turn his attention to his other sons because mm -hmm. he, he got some other sons he's trying to get into the league. Back so, the right. you know, I just think it's smart. He's changing the game. Uh, he's definitely, you know, put some light on his kid because, you know, I didn't really follow, you know. Uh, College basketball. Lonzo. Mm -hmm. Uh, game until you know Levar started to tell me I needed to watch his game and and so that's cool you know I I think a lot of fathers is gonna take take that lead and do that you know when when they son get in that position and it's weird because you know they always say black men aren't there for their kids and now they telling sons to rebel against their father are you crazy he got you to this yeah. point now don't listen to him no no that's crazy uh you know I, I love it. I have no problem with it whatsoever. I'd be the same way. Yeah, I'm, I, mean, I am the same way, you know. Too, yeah, so. without a doubt. Yeah. Not, you know, I I definitely go tell the world that this man is a is a movie star, right. and he is. And, and he still has to pay his dues and all. Yeah, you got to. Go hard. Yep. You got to still pay your dues. You know, I can't just say it. He got to show it, and just like Lonzo, you know, he got to get on the court and show it. You know, pops can only say so much. All right, we got more with Ice Cube when we come back. Let's get into our Ice Cube mini mix. Let me know your favorite Ice Cube joint. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Angela Yee, Charlemagne the God. We are the Breakfast Club. Ice Cube's in the building. Now, Yee. All right, you also spoke to Bill Maher recently, and yeah. that was a big deal because you happened to be booked on the show right after that controversy happened, and you were yeah. already booked to go up to the that show was and God. talk about the use of mm. the N-word. Yeah. So um, was it, did you ever think, like, okay, maybe I... Don't want to, there was so much backlash. Like, I couldn't yeah. understand why people were acting like, oh, you know, Ice Cube's a sellout for going on there. Like, mm -hmm. I didn't understand that. I thought it was good to go up there, say what you had to say, address him, and keep it moving. Well, yeah, I thought it was a teachable moment. Mm -hmm. You know, people who don't want to, you know, go on the show, I don't know what that proves. It's, to me, it's better to go on the show and, you know, deal with a dude face to face. They'd rather talk about him on social media. Yeah, yeah. that's whack. That's weak. <laughs> You know, if I'm a, if I'm a be a real man, I should be able to look that man in the eye and tell him how I feel. But it w it really wasn't for him. It was for his audience. It was for the people watching. It was for all the Bill Mars that's out there that think they can get away with that because right. they got a few homeboys or a few homegirls. And it's just so that to me was more important than than uh, you know checking Bill Maher. You know what I mean? It was really about the audience watching Bill Maher. Right. Because if a white person had a shit with attitude shirt on, you ain't going to tell him to take it off. Uh, right? I'm not going to tell him to take it off, you know. Uh, not with not with, with attitude shirt. You know, I, I, I draw the line when it comes to music. 
you know, entertainment, whatever, you know. But when it comes to real life, that's a whole nother thing to me. Uh, gotcha. So, you know, entertainment is one thing. Uh, but when people, you know, think they can just, you know, pop off in a casual conversation, that's that's a whole nother animal to me. It's funny with, with that song, you know, um, Angelie reported a story the other day about Trey Song with him in court. Mm-hmm. And uh, he was on the Snapchat, I guess, saying, F*** the police. And yeah. they took it literally and was like... He, they asked him in court, what does F*** the police mean? <laughs> and, and they're actually going to use him singing F*** the police because of part of what's going on with his trial, which I thought is crazy because he can't sing a song. Yeah, they yes. did his Snapchat where he was saying that in Vegas he had some altercation or whatever, and he was saying that on Snapchat. And now five days later he was in Detroit and he had an alleged altercation with a police officer so they're saying that here's what you said five days ago f the police what does that mean why would you say that and they're explaining it's a song he just you know yeah. he's not saying literally five mm-hmm. days from now i'm gonna attack a police officer yeah i mean and the actual word i mean well, you know is that that's like that can mean a thousand different right. things right. nowadays so uh you know, I think they was just trying to they mess with him. with him. Yeah, Absolutely. they was just trying to mess with him. On well, that. well, on your new record, Good Cop, Bad Cop. <laughs> yeah. By the way, I still love the fact that you still go at police at this stage in your career. <laughs> yeah, why you be not? rapping like you're not Ice Cube. No, 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 <laughs> no, no. no. I'm rapping world. like I'm Ice Cube. There's a lot of things going on in the world that you <laughs> can't ignore. Without you a doubt. Bother you? Do you still get stopped and harassed? Do they know who you are? They give you those? Or I, I think they give me a little love, you know what I mean, since they know who I am. Mm-hmm. But that don't matter, you know what I mean? I think I'm... In this position, you get a chance to speak for people who can't speak for themselves. Absolutely. So, to me, you go harder when you get here, not less. And, you know, I, I know, you know, I'm doing a lot of different things. So, you know, it takes some time, some time to come around and get back to the music. Uh, but when I do, you know, to me, I, I always, I've never not done an Ice Cube record. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Ice Cube the rapper, though, not Ice Cube the mo- multimedia mogul. Yeah, I mean, when I go rap, that's what I'm, you know, I'm I'm just worried about rap fans. I don't care about right. nothing else. You can't ever say, well, I'm doing good, so F everybody else. Right. No, you can't do that. A lot of people do that, but you, that ain't cool to me. And that's the discussion we always have about good cops, bad cops. We say the same thing that you say in the record. If you a good cop, then stand up and say that these bad cops is wrong. Yeah, but a lot of, you know, a lot of them getting bullied. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? It's a lot of bullying going on in the police department. A lot of racism, a lot mm-hmm. of you know, uh, stuff that going on the streets. You know, a lot of dudes scared to get smoked, to be honest. You know, if they speak up and, I mean, it's it's it's, it's dirty out there. Yeah, it's dirty out there, man. So, you know, a lot, of, a lot of them dudes are scared to speak up, but, you know, I think the community just got to give them the courage. Mm-hmm. The last Friday, are we ever going to get the last Friday? Yeah, you Friday are. Rendition? You're going to get it. Is it we you're all going to get You it. want the yes. you going to get <laughs> <laughs> You're going to get it. Is Chris Tucker going to be in it? We've had our talks. Oh, boy. <laughs> That's all I can say. <laughs> that means a yes. No. I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means. That means Smokey on the fence. I don't know. I'm excited about the Friday movie. You know, I'm, I, it's all about the fans trying to, you know, give them a funny, funny movie. They've been waiting this long. It got to be pretty funny. Now, now here's a hip-hop question. I don't know if you ever saw that video of uh, Suge that was circulating. I think he was on, like, Jimmy Kimmel. And mm-hmm. he talked about how, you know, you in, you inject people with, with HIV needles. He said, we call that that Easy e stuff. And then on, they tried to tie it in with your album, Lethal Injection. And they, <laughs> said, Joe, they said that title of that album was a subliminal diss, The Easy. Nah, nah, without a doubt. I mean, Lethal Injection was done before Easy's death. So I don't understand. It didn't make no they, sense. Yeah, yeah, don't make that. <laughs> uh, I, you know, I blame C. <laughs> you know, I, I blame that because, man, they lost Easy. They lost uh, Biggie. They lost uh, uh, Heavy D. Mm. You know, so it's like dudes walk in there live and come out dead. I don't know what the hell is going on, right? Don't take me to see If anything happened right. to me, don't take <laughs> yeah. me. Yeah, I don't want to fall out because I just. It's just funny to me. It's just strange, you know. Uh, I ain't saying that, but don't take me there. If something <laughs> happens. Don't to me. take me. I there. bought up yeah. a YouTube conspiracy theory to Cube. He shot that down and gave us a whole new YouTube conspiracy. <laughs> That's an hour long video. Somebody gonna do later on about <laughs> well, they, they should. They should. Cause I want to know what the here? hell's going on. Don't right. take rappers. You know, to see I, man, don't take me there. Well, the big three this weekend. How can people buy tickets? What time? What should they expect? You can buy tickets at Ticketmaster. Or go to big3.com and you'll, you know, they'll let you know everything. Game starts 
at one o'clock. Mm -hmm. So one ticket gets you four games. How long? How, and how we long got fabulous games? performing at halftime. Mm -hmm. I mean, between games two and three, the games are to sixty. So they average they out play to sixty to sixty points. Uh -huh. You know, halftime at thirty. So the games really average out to about forty-five minutes apiece. Okay. So it's it's cool to see those guys run and go, and you know, give it they all. Trash talk. Okay. Hand checking. It's going down. It ain't going up. All right. <laughs> well, there you have it. Ice Cube, make sure you get your tickets to Big Three this weekend in Brooklyn, the Barclays Center. I'll be there. Angela Yee will be there. And Fabulous will be performing at halftime. So get your tickets. Get there early. And we appreciate you for joining us. Q? I think that after this first game, we should, me and you, should have a little bet going I'm on. Who we think is going to go game. to the championship and who we think is going to win AI's everything. team. That's my guy. That's Stop being a groupie, with. Envy. That's my groupie. That's my guy. <laughs> you don't even know who's on his team. I don't care. He, AI is the best to me. That's how I look at it. All right. All right. That's D writing. Let's shut up. <laughs> it's the Breakfast Club. Ice Cube. Yeah, yeah. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Angela Yee, Charlemagne the God. We are the Breakfast Club. Let's get to the rumors. Let's talk Remy Ma. This is the rumor report with Angela Yee. Rumor. Well, Remy Ma has been very open about her recent miscarriage, and she talks to Essence Magazine about how she was distraught, she was embarrassed, and she feels like she wants to help other women out there who perhaps want to have a baby but are having difficulties. Here's what she said about starting a fund. I'm trying to start my own fund right now so that women who are like me or have similar situations to me but they can't afford it, they can possibly, you know, get these procedures done and have children because as a woman, that's one of the things that you can do that no other being can do. Like, when that's taken away from you, I don't feel like it should be taken away from you because of money. Like, people put too much of a value on money as opposed to the value on life. So she was saying that some women can't afford those medical treatments, like in vitro fertilization. Very and expensive. That can cost between $12,000 and $17,000. And she said it's weird that if you want to terminate a pregnancy, you could use your health insurance. But if you wanted to conceive, health insurance doesn't cover that. So she said she's been looking at all of that. That's a great point. No, I agree with it. I mean, you're absolutely right. I mean, it should be covered. Life is, is one of those things where... If you want to take in vitro, it's, it's a lot. And those treatments, it's not guaranteed. So you might have to take four or five treatments. And to take a life is way cheaper. What abortion is now? 350, 375? We don't know. I don't know. No, okay. All right. Now let's discuss Bill Cosby. It turns out the jurors are speaking. Ten out of the 12 jurors on the Bill Cosby sex assault trial reportedly wanted to convict him. So there was only two holdouts that actually resulted in the mistrial. <laughs> Two black people on that jury. That's what it sounds That's like. That's right. That watched the Cosby show their whole life in a right. different world and Fat Albert. Bill Cosby left that courtroom and said, hey, hey, hey. And it brought back all those memories of their childhood. They're like, we can't convict this man. Mm. They said people would just start crying out of nowhere. We wouldn't even be talking about the case and people would just start crying. It was very emotional. They said tensions got crazy when one male juror actu actually punched the concrete wall of the jury room. So they said the room was so small you couldn't even pace yeah, where they had to sit and deliberate. It gets frustrating when you tell people they can't watch reruns of the Cosby show because Bill Cosby mm -hmm. raped people. He want to watch his reruns of the Cosby show. Spent all that money on the whole box set DVD and now he can't even watch them? All right. Well, there was one alternate jur juror who spoke out and he said he definitely would have convicted Bill Cosby. That's Mike McClaskey. He's 43 years old. He said, I felt like we let Andrea down. I felt like we could have bought justice, but unfortunately, being an alternate, I didn't have a decision in that matter. Now, he said he and the other alternate <clears throat> jurors were kept in a separate conference room while the main jury made their decision. He said the evidence that he found the most compelling was the phone conversation that Bill Cosby had with Andrea Constant's mom, Gianna Constant, that took place a year after the attack. And in those calls, he admitted that he had molested her with his fingers. And after giving her pills, he never identified by name. He said he called himself a dirty old man over the phone to her, and he said the phone admissions were ridiculously creepy. Well, aren't they getting another chance? Aren't they going to try to retry yeah. the whole situation? They do plan to do that. Cosby is free on bail. He's still facing three counts of aggravated indecent assault. Each has a five to ten year uh, prison sentence, but yes, they are going to go ahead and retry him as fast as possible. Just understand that a life sentence for Bill Cosby is only going to be a year or two. So if that satisfies y'all, cool. Now, I've been following this Bachelor in Paradise story. Did you right? see it? I didn't see it this week. You're talking about The Bachelor. I'm talking about Bachelor. I'm sorry, my bad. We're it's talking about Bachelor segue. in Paradise. Now that's Round of applause, Angelique Segway. 
the whole single. story of Corinne Olympios and Demario Jackson. They had oral sex in the pool during the filming of Bachelor in Paradise, and she was saying that she was so drunk she doesn't remember anything, so she feels like the producer should have stopped it mm-hmm. from happening. But the Warner Brothers investigation, it turns out, says that that is not what happened. They do feel like she was conscious and knew what was going on. Now, she does have a boyfriend, and she had made a deal with her boyfriend before going on the show that she would not have sex with anybody there. He he is standing by her side. He thinks the swimming pool incident doesn't count because she was drunk out of her mind. What? He also is suspicious because he says that her lawyer has not been able to see the tape, but it was shown to DeMario's attorney as well. And Warner Brothers isn't sharing the video with Corinne's legal team because she has threatened legal action. So... I don't know what's going on with that, but Demario Jackson, the guy who had oral sex with her in the pool, is done with the show. They're saying that the show is going to continue to film now, and they're trying to find out who's going to get on the show. But uh, he's saying that they invited him back. He doesn't want to go. He said he has to have therapy and everything, all because this scandal has been linked to him. And now it's just going to forever be a black cloud over him. He said Mm -hmm. he didn't do anything wrong. And that is a fact. When you're accused of a crime like that, even when you get found not guilty, people still be like, nah, he probably did. That's right. Right. You're going to need therapy. You're going to have to sue. And but when, but uh, I do feel like they were more blaming the actual producers of the show. Like, because supposedly they both were drinking all day and they feel like something, somebody from the show should have prevented have this. Mm-hmm. Right. But everybody else was saying that she was conscious and knew what was going on. And when did the average cost of an abortion in the United States jump to 468? Inflation. Jesus Christ. When's the last time you paid for an abortion? You know what? Um, let's don't get the days up next, right? <laughs> when don't, how much was it back then? Three fifty, three seventy five. But how long ago was that? I don't know. <laughs> but I'm saying I obviously it's more. T- I got a birthday in seven days. I'm old. I don't remember. But obviously it's more go. expensive now, as everything is years and years later. Yeah. Hopefully years and years later. No, 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 no. What? <laughs> you mumbling over there? No, 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 no. All right. All right. Well, I'm Angela Yee, and that is your rumor report. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Miss Yee. It's time for Donkey of the Day. Donkey of the Day, Charlemagne. I'm a Democrat, so being Donkey of the Day is a little bit of a mixed question. So like a donkey. Yeehaw. Okay. Donkey of the Day. <laughs> the Breakfast Club, bitches. Now, I've been called a lot in my 23 years, but Donkey of the Day is a new one. All right, ladies, hit record right now, okay? Donkey of the Day for Uh-oh. Thursday, June 22nd. NBA draft edition goes to all you young ladies in New York City tonight chasing a check. Well, not chasing a check. Nothing wrong with chasing a check. Chasing a check the wrong way. Let your Uncle Charlotte explain. Tonight, the streets of New York City are going to be filled with young ladies in high heels and little black dresses and the finest of hair weaves. Oh, I'm talking bundles of premium Remy Silky Weave, 100% virgin Remy Brazilian. Oh, they got their best on tonight. Okay? But the reason I am giving you women donkey of the day tonight is because if this is still your approach to the game, then the re- the only rookies out tonight aren't the ones getting drafted to the NBA, okay? Listen to me, man. Your Uncle Charlotte has a company called PPM. We have been inactive for a while, but we are still available for special consultation. Consider this a special consultation, okay? PPM is proper poom poom management. Uh, I don't encourage women to use what they got to get what they want. I would much rather you use your brains than your body, but I have a way for you to use your brain and your body to bag a ball. Let's see, that little black dress... You know, high heel way. We've been seeing that for years. Okay, even those wet behind the air, green ass, new money athletes that will be walking the streets tonight, they all on to that. Okay, they seen that before. See, ladies, when you approach a man in that manner, you will never get him. I watch Finding Bigfoot on Animal Planet. One of my favorite shows to watch, and it's a great show, but the reason they would never catch Bigfoot is their approach. See, on that show, they go in the woods with a full camera crew, and they use techniques like knocking on trees, and they do what's called Sasquatch calls. Can we hear what that sounds like? Come on, big nine-footer. Show yourself. Come on, baby, just give us one good knock. What? There is no way in hell they will ever catch an elusive creature like Bigfoot by going in the woods making all that noise. And ladies, it is no way in hell you will ever catch a baller, a big seven-footer, by coming to New York City the night of the draft making all that noise. See, when you had a little black dress on in the high heels, you have the mask off. And I 
I know y'all love the future record, and y'all gonna be shaking your ass off trying to get the attention of one of these new draftees tonight when that record comes on in the club. But having your mask off is the reason you won't catch one of these new ballers tonight. Ladies, keep your mask on. Don't run up in the woods knocking on trees and doing Sasquatch calls. Change your approach. See, ladies, you have to approach NBA draft night like a job interview. Instead of a little black dress and high heels, put on some nice professional business attire, okay? Business formal attire. Nice business suit, a blazer with a trouser and skirt. Make sure your fabrics match, okay? A nice neutral color like black or dark gray and a nice seasonless fabric. Maybe wool. Make sure it's well-fitting. Pay attention to the details, like the length of the sleeves on the blazer. Pay attention to how the blazer sits on your shoulders. If you decide to wear a skirt, pay attention to the length of the skirt, okay? And the slit at the back of the skirt, especially when you're sitting down or walking. The skirt should come at least to the top of your knees, okay? Or you can wear a nice formal business top, okay? You, you get my drift, right? That is having the mask on. Now that you got your wardrobe right, what are you discussing with these young men? Well, when you're talking to these new NBA draftees, don't talk to them about business. Tell them you are in the tech world or the fitness world or real estate, anything business related. Make sure you have business cards. Keep the conversation brief because remember, you don't really know what you're talking about. And if you're fine, he won't care what you talk about, but he will like your approach. All you want is a callback. You know once you get a callback, you got him. So what you really need is business cards and confidence. Walk up to the new draftee and say, hello, my name is Stacy. I am in the tech world, and I have an app you may want to invest in. Oh, hello, my name is Tasha. I'm a real estate agent. Now is the time to buy some property. Here is my card. When he tries to make small talk, just tell him, call you, then walk off. And this is why your business attire has to be well-fitting, because he needs to see that you got ass underneath those trouser pants. That, my friends, is proper poom poom management and increases your chances of bagging a baller by a guarantee. 40%. Trust your Uncle Charlotte, ladies, okay? That approach is way more of a high percentage shot than the little black dress and high heels. And I'm disgusted that you thoughts haven't put any real thought into how to handle draft night, okay? Some of you all are like Phil Jackson when it comes to how you approach this new era of the NBA. High heels and little black dresses are the triangle offense. That don't work in today's NBA, okay? Those little black dresses and high heels used to get people rings back in the day, but not in 2017. Look, ladies, you want to find Bigfoot or not? If so, listen to your Uncle Charlotte. You still got time to change your game plan. It's early as hell. You still got time to run the Bloomingdale's and Nordstrom's. Or oh, if you're coming from down south, Charlotte Roos has some proper business attire. The moral of the story is it's much easier to bag a baller with your mask on than your mask off. Give all these rookie-ass thoughts trying to bag a baller tonight in a little black dress and high heels the sweet sounds of the Hamiltons, please. Oh, now you are the donkey of the day. You did this before, bro. I'm just here to help. Okay. That's all. I'm just here to help. It, too much information. Yeah, really. A lot of information. <laughs> information you, is good. If you were a woman <laughs> in, his, in his previous these life, men would be in trouble. In, information is good. Okay. And that's the key. Well, that's the key to life. Information. That's how you got that information. And by the way, they do bro. have Charlotte Roos here. Oh, they, they do. I'm Where? Just, there you go, Ye. Do. See, that's what I'm you supposed to do. They go Auntie Ye <laughs> chiming in, chiming in. There you go. Not right. just down south. I didn't know. Right. I'm glad to know that. He's trying to help out, too. Okay. Well, don't go chasing Bloomingdale's and Nordstrom. Stick to the rainbows and Charlotte Roos as you used to. <laughs> Yo. New Yorkers. You know, um, it's funny. When you mentioned Rainbow uh, a couple months ago, Rainbow mm -hmm. actually sent Angelia a letter and was like, hey, we have trendy and cool stuff as well, and we'd like to send you some stuff. So did they ever send you that stuff? I didn't pick anything yet. Drop on the clues, Mom, for Rainbow, damn it. All right. Rainbow has saved many a life out there. Don't y'all look judgmental. FYI, I grew up on Rainbow. There you mm -hmm. go. Rainbow I, and uh, Joyce Leslie. <laughs> I don't know. Isn't Joyce, Joyce Leslie for, yeah. for the big no, no, that's Lane Bryant. Lane oh, Bryant for the bad. big girl. <laughs> right. One time know. for all the big girls that shop at Lane Bryant. Drop on the clues box. All right. Lane Bryant, it's be nice. Like you grew way. up on Oak Tree. I don't like you judgmental last me girl. I did have Oak day. Tree. I, did, I knew I did it. Mess I with could, Oak tree. You definitely like an Oak Tree kind of guy. <laughs> Watch your mouth. <laughs> all right. I don't even know what that means. Oh, you don't know Oak Tree? All right. Never mind. All right. Well, that was Donkey today. They didn't have that down south. No, they didn't have Oak Tree. No. It was where men shop. It was like equivalent to Rainbow, but for men. Oh. Mm -hmm. You didn't have one of those? Mm -mm. He shopped at Target. Well, Walmart. They didn't have that. They had Walmart back Not then, Target. right? Target. Of course they had Walmart back then. Walmart older Walmart. than all of us. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. No, up next is Ask Ye. <laughs> no, it's not. Up next is Jalen Rose. No, up next is Ask Ye. 
Everybody's looking around. What's happening? What is- oh. <laughs> Up next is Ask Ye. 800 585 He's coming in nine. Oh, y'all. Y'all. Nah. <laughs> 800-585-1051. Ask ye. Oh, I can't tell y'all how dumb y'all are. 800-585-1051. You got a question for ye? Call it now. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. DJ NV Angela Ye, Charlamagne the guy. We are The Breakfast Club. It's time for Ask ye. 800-585-1051. What line you want to go to, ye? Let's do line four. Hello, who's this? Anonymous. Yes, anonymous. You don't want to say your name? So what's the problem? No. So, okay. I got married on Saturday. Congrats. I had a baby. Thank you. I had a baby in March, right? So my husband now, he has two kids before me. So there was issues in his past relationship, and he said he didn't want to be caught up like that again. So he DNA tested my baby to make sure it was his, but not the other two kids. Now, what do you mean there was issues in other relationship? What happened? Like, the, the the girl was cheating. He don't feel like, he still feels like the kids are not his. But, like, he was young, and his, like, mom told him if he got a DNA test, they would automatically put him on child support. So he was scared. He wanted a DNA test, but he didn't get one because of, like, what his family was telling him. Okay, so but now, now you are suffering from his uh, post-traumatic stress from the situation yes. before you. And, of yes. course, the baby is his, right? Yes. He should never ever question you. $450 later, 99.9%. Right. Now, it sounds like that's more of his issue with himself and things that happened before you than his issue with you. Should I feel some type of way, though? You know, uh, I mean, I think it would be hurtful, but I also feel like it's not personal against you. I feel like he's had some things that happened to him in the past that he still harbors some type of feeling toward. And... He probably feels like it's too late now for him to do a DNA test for his other two kids because yeah. he's been raising them as their father all this time. So now yeah. you kind of got the stray bullet in the situation. Yeah. You know, I would express to him that it was very hurtful. And you agreed to do it and go get the, and do the DNA test, right? Yeah, because, like, so... Because you, like you were with certain. With the other kids, he's like, I really don't think those are mine. And, you know, I didn't want that for my son. Like, I wanted you to know what all certain see before you went... Right. Any further that he's yours, because I don't want him to deal with that. Right. Well, hon, I will say this. Yes, that would have hurt my feelings, and I would tell him that, but I would also understand that he's had issues in the past that has nothing to do with you, just like sometimes we bring some of our baggage from past relationships into our new situations, whether or not we mean to. That does happen, you know? So <laughs> I can't say that I would hold that against him forever, but I would definitely let him know, you know, Unfortunately, it seems like he just has been scarred from something that has nothing to do with you. Okay. So instead of being angry about it, I would be a little hurt, but I would also understand this isn't about me. This is about you. And you have some trust issues. And I haven't done anything for you to treat me this way. And I understand that it's not because of me that you have these issues. But we need to make sure this is a a sign of a bigger issue. And so you don't want to have these trust issues in your relationship moving forward. So that's why this is something that you need to address because this really is just symbolic of that. Okay. Okay, so... Yes, thank you so much. And congratulations on the wedding, though. Don't let this ruin that. Thank you. No, it hasn't been ruining it. But, like, I've just been thinking about it. Like, so I'd be in a bad mood and he'd act fine. I'm just like, oh, it's nothing. But, no, like, don't I tell him it's nothing. Just blood. tell him that it did hurt your feelings just so he's aware but let him know that you also are aware. And let and that's a great way to start a discussion about it so that you guys can start working through what it is that's going on with him. A lot okay. of times guys bottle these things up and don't express it. It's not good for you to do the same thing, too. Okay. All right. Good luck, Mama. Thank you so much. All right. Ask Yee, 800 If you got a question for Yee, call her now. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Angela Yee, Charlamagne the God. We are The Breakfast Club. Now we're in the middle of Ask Ye. We got Grace on the line. Good morning, Grace. Good morning. What's your question for Ye? My question is, if I should take my boyfriend, or if I should let my boyfriend get on the bus now, or if I should just be taking him to work, we share a car, and right now what's happening is that all my gas is being burned out within like a week, and I'm putting $30 in there. So I'm like, there's no way that my money should be gone, or my gas should be gone that fast. He's like, well, I didn't put $60 in here. 
So my money shouldn't be going up fast. And I'm like, you know, you should just catch the bus. I'm just saying. All right, so hold what on. You think this, I is, do? this is your guys' car together. Well, it's my car, but we share the car. Okay, so it's your car. Now, when you take him to work, is that you having to drive a certain distance and go out of your way? Yes, girl, girl, yes, exactly. And he's not contributing to gas or anything for the car? He is, but the thing is where we having a problem is, it's like he is spending 60 and I spend 30 in gas. Mm-hmm. And his, uh, thir- well, his $60 run out when he puts that in the gas. And that's breaking down. He put like thirty in once, and then you put ten and twenty there. And that's but like, he's con- so he's contributing. Yeah, he's contributing. It's just he's burning out the gas. Well, yeah, it's not his fault that he works where he works. I mean, you offer well, you, know you offer to take him, right? I, it's not that I offer to take him. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You know, yo, you need to shut up. But here, here's, here's my thing, Grace. Here's my thing. Okay, first of all, don't you enjoy the commute with your boyfriend that y'all get to be in the car together and spend some time together? I do. Okay. I do. So that's, that's important. You know what? I, what bothers me is when people do something for me that's nice that I think they want to do and then they complain about it. If you want to do something nice for somebody, for your boyfriend, just do something. No, no, no. Grace, enjoy the time with your boyfriend. And what's your boyfriend's name? His name is Michael. Michael, are you doing nice things for Grace to show that you appreciate what she's doing for you? Yes, I'm taking her to work right now, Yee. Okay, so he reciprocates, he contributes. Y'all have a good time yes. together. You love each other, right? Yeah, yeah we do. And like I tell her, my problem is I fill up the car. She puts a little money in at times. Time here, time here. I'll fill up the car. Look, y'all both put gas in the car. Y'all both enjoy each other's company. Why are you wasting time arguing? Because she, the money is low. It sounds like y'all just arguing to argue. Yes, y'all are struggling together. And when you come through this on the other side, you're going to look back and be like, I can't believe we was arguing over gas for the car. See, thank you. Thank you. That's what I was trying to get the point across. Thank you. Here she goes. (laughs) Grace. Thank you, Lee, but uh, his ass, I'm telling you, we about to be on the bus. Grace, stop being petty. Oh, girl. <laughs> Listen, I understand, like, being low on money is kind of stressful, and sometimes that stress translates over into your relationship and you argue over silly things. Yes, it definitely does. That's definitely one of our issues. Right. So just understand that at least y'all are together in this. I heard that, Lee. Who? It's ye, not Lee. <laughs> Grace, oh, I'm sorry. Grace, don't be petty to me too. <laughs> I'm sorry, with ye. It's All right, now y'all kiss and go to work together and love each other. All right, thank you so much. All right, happy Thursday. <laughs> thank. You. All right. Ask ye 800-585-1051. If you need some advice, some relationship advice, you can call ye at any time. Now, ye, we got rumors on the way? Yes, let's talk about Jay-Z. We already told you about his new album, which is coming on June 30th. Well, let's talk about what else he's possibly going to be doing next. All right. We'll get into all that when we come back. Keep it locked. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. It's about time. What's going on? Yo, yo, yo. This is the Rumor Report with Angela Yee on The Breakfast Club. Well, T.I. is going to be starring in a new Fox TV series. It's called Atlanta's Most Wanted. He's also going to executive produce this new cop drama. Now, he's not a cop on there. Of course not. How would T.I. be able to play a cop? Acting. As much as want, it's not, not from if he's in, if it was any <laughs> other state other than Atlanta, I'd be like, all right, cool. In Atlanta, T.I. got to be a felon. That would be incredible if T.I. could make you believe that he would. Now, that would be some acting. If you no. could see T.I. as a cop? No, not in Atlanta. Any other place but Atlanta. All right, well, he is going to play Marcus Armstrong, who is the son of a notorious Atlanta criminal kingpin. Mm. So that's, uh, but he's also recruited to be a part of a new vice squad that investigates criminal activity in Atlanta. So he like a double agent? Basically. So maybe he is kind <laughs> of like a wow. snitch. I don't know. Wow. Like. <laughs> listen, this might be the now only that's time. Acting. Listen, this is the only time you can call T.I. a snitch and he ain't going to swing on you. Right. <laughs> he's going to swing on you. He's still going to swing on you. No, no, no. He'll be like, well, you know, that's just what I had to do for the role. And <laughs> we, call that act, we call that acting, shorty. <laughs> All right. Now, it looks like people are speculating that Jay-Z is preparing to go on tour. And that is going to be for the summer, immediately following the release of his new album, which is coming out June 30th. 
All right, now a source is saying that Jay-Z is planning to hit the road in a few months. You know, Beyonce just had the twins. Originally, the tour was planned for the summer, but now they have moved it to the fall because of the kids. You usually tour within a month or so of the album. But, you know, when you have twins just freshly born, you got to put that on hold. So right. that should be interesting. I can't wait for June 30th to hear this new album, by the way. Me too. All right, Jesse Williams. He is having some problems with his estranged wife, and now he is requesting joint legal custody of his kids. Now, his wife has refused his request for more time, and he said, Aaron restricts my time with the children and decides when and for how long I may have them. She has rejected without any reason each and every request I have made to have the children sleep over at my residence. On the few days that I have the children, Aaron has insisted that my time with the children be limited during the week to approximately two and a half hours per day, despite my request for more time, including overnights with the children. I am therefore requesting a court order for a joint physical custody parenting plan. And by this, that's what you got to do if you're not happy with what your ex or your baby mom is doing you got to make sure you go to court and be proactive and request that time all right and shout out to tracy ellis Ross. she is on the cover of a red book magazine and she's talking about getting into a happy place I always look at Tracy Ellis Ross as a fun and beautiful woman, Mm -hmm. but there's things that go on in people's heads that we don't know about. She said, I've always had a somewhat contentious relationship with my body. I spent years trying to teach myself to smile in a way that made my top lip look smaller. A lot of that has to do with sexism and racism combined with the ever-changing tides of the culture of beauty. One minute you're supposed to be really skinny, the next minute you're supposed to have huge boobs, one minute you're supposed to have no lips, the next you're supposed to be full. No one can keep up. I finally got to a place where I was like, excuse my French, F that, that that's not fair. I will be uh, I'll be interviewing Tracy Ellis Ross this weekend. I'm gonna be doing Genius Talks for BET. You going to the BET Awards? I'm not going to the awards, but I'm I'm hosting BET Genius Talks this Saturday. So I'm interviewing Tracy Ellis Ross, Issa Rae, Ava DuVernay, and uh, Nick Cannon. But he don't matter in that equation. Oh, what? Damn. I mean, come on, salute <laughs> to my guy Nick. But come on, Issa Rae, Tracy Ellis Ross, Ava DuVernay. I'm much m- more excited to talk it's to those three. Just because you know Nick. I know Issa too. But I'm um, not like you know Nick. Issa. Yeah, Issa come on, did, Nick can't. Issa actually did a. Uh, she wrote on the back of my book. She did a blur for the back of my book. She I had, mean, let me see what she said. She I said, feel like you hung out with Nick Cannon way more than Issa Rae. Definitely did. But I like Issa though. Yeah, Issa said Charlemagne is a freaking, <laughs> but he's my favorite one. Oh yeah, she knows you. Yes. But I'm just saying, Nick Cannon still has is a great businessman. And who would you be more excited to Nick. talk to? Come I on, see Nick all the time. <laughs> see, <laughs> see, see Nick all see? the time. <laughs> see? You guys are fine. <laughs> Ava right. Duvernay, Tracy Ellis Ross, Issa Rae, <laughs> Nick Cannon. Damn it, man. One of these kids is doing their own thing. I'm Angela Yee, and that is your rumor report.